Hey everybody, so I am back with another guest uh, and I wanna talk about leadership. You know, we're going through crisis here and the gentleman, I couldn't think of a better person to have on other than Jay Barbuto, who is the director of the Center for Excellence uh, and Leadership in Cal State Fullerton. And I'm gonna have him on here for a minute. He's in the waiting room, right? he's in the, uh, the green room, the waiting green room for a minute. But I really, uh, he's a friend and somebody I know, and I really would like to have him uh, on here for a few minutes to discuss that. Also, the impact on education as at the college level, like how are they dealing with that? So without further ado, let me bring Jay on here and see here. Jay, are you there? I sure am. Hi, Jay. How are you? Hey, Ron. Uh, good to see you, my friend. I just, I just said that, you know, we want leadership during a time of crisis. And I can't think of a better person to have on to talk about that, along with other things to do with leadership, than the director of the Center for Leadership. Well, glad to, glad to be here, Rod. And, you know, this is, these are exciting times for everyone. They really are. We were talking about this before, before a minute ago, like about how when we were off the air, like about how it's kind of an it's an interesting time because I'm seeing people rise to the occasion, and I know it's just been like a first week, but there are people that are almost like early adapters, if you will, to like the, what is the new normal or what's happening next. Uh, and then we were talking about how some things may never go back to quote unquote the old normal because of just people being exposed to certain things. Now, obviously, the longer we are in this space, the more likely it will take traction. But um, for those who don't know you, as well as I do, and I'll keep all those stories to myself, but uh, how, um, how, how did you find yourself being a director at the Center for Leadership in Cal State Fullerton, which I thank you, by the way, for inviting me once to speak there. It's a great program. It's a great university. Um, you know, anybody who's not familiar with the Center for Leadership, they should be. Uh, give that people a little bit of background on that, Jay, if you don't sure. mind. Um, you know, when I was a professor of leadership and organizational behavior at the University of Nebraska for 14 years. And so any, and I was deeply uh, embedded in the research field, doing a lot of research in the area of, uh, of leadership development, but also on the antecedents or the predictors of leadership. I spent my career understanding whether leaders are, are made or whether leaders are born. That was my research question for really the greater part of, of my 14 years at Nebraska. Any faculty member that's researching leadership for that period of time, for that much time, the dream of any professor of leadership would be eventually to have a center for leadership that they would oversee. So at around year 12 at Nebraska, I started looking at some of those types of opportunities. And the opportunity at the university, at, here at Cal State Fullerton came up. They were looking for somebody to come and start the Center for Leadership from scratch. Mm. How um, long ago was that, Jay? That was in 2011 is when, I, is when I joined. And it was a unique opportunity, Rod, because to come to the Center for Leadership here in a community where the um, where 60 percent of the students are the first in their family to go to college, where 80 percent are working full or part time while they're going through school, where 20 percent are food or housing insecure, the opportunity for impact at the third largest business school in the whole country, it was a it was an incredible. Um, opportunity of variables all coming together to speak to uh, impact, impact the opportunity to make an incredible impact. And that was a great draw for me. Also, because I was a researcher of, yeah. of leadership, there was, I had, I had had opportunities to think about what a center for leadership could be and should be. And my view was a center for leadership could actually touch every level of a university. Um, it could touch undergraduate students on campus. It could touch graduate students on campus. It could touch alumni. It could touch businesses that, that support that university in the community. And it could also support the, uh, the community itself. And so I've been a strong pro proponent of 
developing a center that would touch every level of the university. I told, I told people you were in demand. I mean, the phone ringing in the background is a perfect example, right? It is. It's perfect. <laughs> Let me see who that is. You sure. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. I just want to shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's interesting, and I totally get it, because to have that opportunity, especially like you're saying, where it's not sort of an elite institution, I mean, it is in its, in its achievements, but it's not, you know, sort of like sort of this pedigreed institution that only services a certain part of the population. Nothing wrong with that. But this is this is more impacting on people's lives. So your first generation of, of, of uh, maybe students going to undergraduate, people that are pursuing things that are, you know, and we we are in, a, in I think, in a, in a very entrepreneurial and innovation driven part of the country. So to have all those things, to have sort of the 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 openness rather than societies or areas that are in closed circles you have a lot more opportunity to impact people that you know 20 years from now you planted a seed somewhere that basically bore an amazing impact socially economically financially for that area and let alone the the, the, the you know the the domino effect on family dynamics and 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 wealth one thing that strikes me as we go through what we're going through right now Mm. And I, if you're looking at the national scene, at the at the governor's scene, and I'm not being political, I just think it really sh highlights the importance for leadership, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 the and the impact of either lack of leadership, abdication of leadership, or just bad leadership. And I don't know if you agree with me that that it is sort of a crisis of this nature that maybe highlights the really the importance of that topic. You know, I think sometimes in these moments when we feel like there's a there's a time of crisis, and and this is definitely one of those times. This is usually when leaders emerge. Mm -hmm. um, this is and and oftentimes this is when leaders crumble, crumble away, and fail. But oftentimes, folks rise up in these moments, and their their leadership potential is is fully realized. Um, and it may be people that you're not th you're not really thinking of in that role that really rise to rise to the occasion, rise to the surface. Uh, I, I have a lady that that I'm planning to have on tomorrow that is sort of like that, and, and it's you know like stepping up to the plate. And it's funny, some you're right because. If you if you are a student of history that I know you are and I, I tend to be a little bit too, uh, thanks to my dad for subjecting me to all of that early on, right? I can't shake it. But if you look at that, you're absolutely right. It's moments like this. It's moments of crisis, where you have people that emerge, and this could be very much like life shaping, in terms of career, in terms of presence, in terms of importance. These people that are you never really thought of in this capacity. And yet people who you may have thought of in this capacity that are found lacking or needing to basically reinvent the way they go about certain things. It's a really fascinating time, right? I mean, it, we're talking about it almost like it's an opportunity. And I think it is. I mean, I think we need to maybe reframe a little bit of what's going on. It's unfortunate, but there may be a lot of positive that comes out of this. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that a lot of times in these moments, some leaders may feel the pressure to, to have the answers mm. and, and they may lack the humility Good point. That, that actually must be, be present in these moments. And so oftentimes there, there's that struggle of if I'm, a, if I'm in a position of leadership, then I should have the answers. And if we don't have the answers, then we're going to sound... <laughs> We're going to sound like we don't have the answers, even though we might be think, expressing so, it. So, so, so in circumstances like that, Jay, then what is the proper course of action? Because, yes, I mean, we all find ourselves in those situations where we think we know. And then the really the only true test of that is when you are finding yourself in that situation to find out whether you do or don't know how to respond to it. Right. You can pretend pretend, you know, you can project, you can extrapolate. But until you find yourself in that situation, that is the only true test of whether you rise to the occasion or not. So if you are in a position of leadership and people are looking to you in crisis to give guidance and you happen to be a person that now feels that pressure, what is, what is a proper course of action in a situation like that? 
I think transparency um, is one of the keys. You, you have to be able to say, these are the things I know. These are the things that I am still learning. And we're all learning. These are the people we need to be listening to who know some of these things that we're still learning about. I think the, the more measured leaders, the more transparent leaders will in the long term gain the trust of those around them. If I pretend that I know things that I don't know, it'll soon be revealed that I don't no, you know can, you, those you can't, things. You can't, you can't hide that too long. Right. And that, that's what, what we oftentimes call the false charisma. Because if I come out and say, well, here's the way it's going to be, and here's what we need to do, and then people say, yeah, let's do that. And then short, shortly thereafter, we all discover, oh, that was completely wrong. This mm -hmm. leader was wrong. Then everyone will knock down that leader. Um, and so you can have this effect, especially during times of crisis. If you're a person that says, here's what we need to do. Let's do this. People will rally behind that because in these times, people are looking for leaders to tell us and to guide us and to show us the way. But the moment we misstep in those, in those environments, the, 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 that charismatic effect, if we call it a charismatic effect. That's it, a good way to, I, I never heard that term, but it, that's a good term uh, because it could be a false effect, basically, right? It, it, it could be a misleading effect. And that, in some cases, may be more damaging than just basically owning up the fact that you don't have an answer. It's like, it's the old adage that says, if somebody comes to you with a situation and you don't have an answer, it's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find out versus, mm -hmm. well, here's what I think. And it's really half baked. Uh, I mean, we deal, we talk about this all the time with business, just regular business. This is a more, much larger crisis going on on, on a, not only a national, but an international level. So Share with me what you, you being a, a researcher of leadership, you being a, a professor, a director at the center, share with me what you consider some of the basic pillars for leadership in today's world. Because I understand also things change, like the, the skills and requirements are a little bit different. But I'm assuming there are certain things that are core and are almost timeless. Well, and there are things that. Yeah, there, right. and there's a lot of things that are. Um, that, that, have, that have pervaded through the years. Generally speaking, when we talk about leadership, we, we can talk about different leadership styles. And most of us know certain leadership styles tend to be good. If you're inspirational, that's good. If you're a visionary, that's good. If you uh, are trying to develop your team, that's good. These are, these are all values and principles of leadership that, that most everyone would recognize as being pretty helpful, pretty valuable pieces. But when I think about tenets of leadership, if we're talking about extraordinary leadership, I usually try to focus on, on a couple of, of, of simple things that I would say really helps us navigate um, our, our leadership path. And, and I really, I, I sometimes call it like the three C's, um, and it, and it's, it starts with consciousness. It, it starts in our mind. It starts with what we think and how we think and how we conceptualize the things that we're doing. Are we thinking about the positive, uh, futuristic um, direction? Are we thinking about the things we want to achieve? Are we thinking about the ways that we can succeed? Um, because a lot of times in our minds, we, 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 we are focused on the negative. We're focusing on the deficit. We're focusing on the weaknesses. And we're not really focusing on the things that, on the tasks at hand. We're not focusing on what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so I would always say it, it starts with that consciousness. And then, and so it's the first of the, of the three C's. The second, so would you say, would you, sorry, before you go to the second yeah, one. So would you, would you say that that's not exactly, but similar to when you say somebody has a mindset of reactiveness versus proactiveness a mindset of, like you said, like responding to things versus planning. I've, I've talked to a couple of people that have been in the military and they said, you know, one, one example, perfect example that was given to me is like Colin Powell, Powell during the first Gulf War, right? Basically, you know, being done with his planning and then basically says, says to his, his uh, team, okay, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go sleep now. And they're like, how do you need to go sleep? I mean, we've got a big thing going on. I said, well, I did my planning. Now I'm going to go to sleep. Like, like it's, it's a the proactive versus a reactive situation. 
And and would you say that that's sort of like the mindset maybe part and part of what you're talking about? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, your consciousness is 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 how your how your mind is filtering the 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 situation that you're in. And and the way that you the the you know you look the, the law of attraction. If we if if our yeah. mindset is focusing on in the right areas, then it really keeps us thinking about the right messages and the right kind of direction that we're trying to go. So I always just say it starts with the consciousness, but the next piece is the conversation. Um, you know, our words, what we say, because a lot of the times there are a lot of leaders out there that will think one thing, but what they communicate may not be consistent with their thoughts. You know, they're, they're thinking a lot of negative things, but then they say positive things. And you can, and when you watch them and when you listen to them, you can, you can see the disconnect between what's going on upstairs and what they're saying. Like their, their, their words and their, their thoughts don't seem to be aligned. And when that happens, we, we don't trust that leader. We don't think that, yeah. they're, that they're transparent. Yeah. And so- like they don't, they don't, they, you can tell on intuitive level that they are not, they don't believe what they are uttering. Exactly. Right. And so that's why, but, but it starts with the consciousness that you've got to be thinking the right things. Um, and then you're saying the things that are consistent with those thoughts. So consciousness, conversation. Con consciousness, conversation. And that alignment gives us transparency. Okay. And then the, we need to stay aligned between our words and our action. Our conversation and our conduct needs to stay aligned as well. If our conduct is always consistent with our conversation, then people will see us as reliable. People will right. see us as, as authentic. People will see us as uh, a, a person that can, be, that can be truly trusted in the, in the long term. There's so many people that lose that alignment. They say one thing, but then their actions are not consistent with that. And when we observe that, if people have to choose between believing your words or your actions, they're always going to trust your actions right. over your words. And right. so staying aligned, I always talk about leaders need to be aligned within themselves. Their consciousness, their conversation, and their conduct have to be aligned so that they stay transparent and they develop authenticity in, their, in the people that they're working with. And I so found that to be tenants that have always been true. Well, and that's what we're talking about. Some of these things that are basically universally timeless, really, right? Reg across across countries, languages. I mean, you. you I, I thought you were gonna, you know, and maybe this is going back to my 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 days of business school. But you know, I thought you were gonna just give me this list of of pillars. What you were talking about were literally human behavioral characteristics that are universal, regardless of language, regardless of socioeconomic level, and it really stems down to that alignment that in many cases we look outward for an alignment. What you're talking about is an internal alignment that first and foremost is to one's own benefit. Yeah. That then, Absolutely. Yeah. You have to know who you are, Rod. You have to know who you are as a leader. You have to know what you stand for. Right. You have to know what you believe in. And you have to communicate those things and then act accordingly. Well, and you know, you know what, Jay, you mentioned it a minute ago, and I think this, 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 again, anchors this, is that if you do get to that point, which is what you should be striving for, then the ability to say, I don't know, and being authentic in where your, not failings are, but where your limitations are at the moment, becomes a lot easier to do. And all that does is just builds, and it may not be what people want to hear at that moment, but over a long period of time, it builds and anchors that trust that you are a person that is part of dependable solution. I can go to you. And even if you don't know, you will try to empathize and find a way to find out and help me. And that's all I really ask for as a human being to another human being. Do you think we are doing a good job of that right now? Or do you think this is either a too early in the crisis for that to kind of emerge? I mean, I already see some people that are stepping up in ways that I didn't expect outside their normal operation, normal behavior pattern, normal focus and business, you know, that are doing something completely differently. I mean, I actually woke up I mean, I, and this, this doing this thing out of the house is it, it, it stems from waking up one morning and going, okay, I turn on the news. I'm feeling really nasty, really lousy right now. I go to social media. I feel really lousy right now. 
I, my primary business is, is interior design, commercial design. Whatever. We've got some projects, you know, I'm knocking on wood. Thank God we have a few projects that are still going mm -hmm. on. But I needed to have a purpose to actually navigate this and find a reason to put out something that was productive and purposeful. And so I decided to do this, which is not a departure from doing it at the station, right? But to do it for a different purpose. And I actually feel like I'm contributing. And I think there's the same thing I'm seeing from other people that it may not be in their own wheelhouse, but they're stepping up in ways that are different. And I'm talking about the person that I know down the street or, you know, people bringing food to their neighbors or checking on that elder person next door from the, you know, the social distancing, this safe distance of six feet. It's almost like Catholic school, three feet, six feet. I don't know where the numbers come from. Right. Yeah. But do you feel on an overall level that we are, stepping up to the plate or are we still, is it still too early? I think, I think the answer is both. I, I think it's probably too early to really know for sure. I think everyone is trying to do the, the best that they know how, but in all of these types of moments, when you're experiencing things for the first time, there's a lot of firsts yeah. that are taking place now. And so I think what you start to see is you have the people that, that recognize the, the, um, the complexity of the situation. And, and it is complex. It, it and is a complex situation. Yeah. Um, and then you have other people that try to simplify the situation and, and sort of black and white it. And, and what ends up happening is the people that try to black and white it oftentimes will sort of lose their authenticity because it's not, it's never quite as simple as somebody might try to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and the leaders that maybe understand and embrace the complexity of the situation tend to do a better job over the long haul of gaining trust from other people around them. And that, that, was, that would be my... Well, I mean, it goes, it goes, goes back to what you were talking about a minute ago, right? You know, that, that it, it's that humility that that also is goes hand in hand with accepting the complexity because mm -hmm. because if you if you accept the complexity there's a part of that complexity that you know you're going to be challenged by you're going to be tested by you don't know enough about and so with that acceptance is sort of parallel to the humility like you have a humility to know that you're going to be there you're going to do what you can you're going to grow the skill set you're going to do better tomorrow by what you learn today but that there is a component to that that has to be based from a position of humility versus what you termed a minute ago as, what was the term that you just used about um, the ego or the, the, uh, the false the, the charisma? False, the false charisma. Yeah, the false charisma. I mean, I mean that, that it's interesting. I, I, I can't help but think, and again, I'm, I'm not, I'm a bit too jaded, I think, but to think that, you know, we're going to make a 180 degree turn on this, but it is going to be interesting to see how much of this communal, we're all in this together, common purpose that we actually hold on to after we come out of this crisis. Because there's no question we're coming out of this crisis. The, 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 the true interesting question for me is how are we going to come out? Like when we come out, how are we going to look like? I know, I know, and I, I'm really curious to see that as well, because I, I think that there are already starting to to create some differences of opinions uh, that are that are developing quite strongly over these last few days, especially of how to come it's out. It's only of been crisis. a week. It's only been a week. I know, right? I know, and some some leaders are saying we need to just come out of the crisis and everyone protect yourselves, yep. and then we have others that say no, we need to hunker down and we need to. Um, shelter in place. We need to even do further, do more than just shelter in place. Lock down completely everything. Yeah. yeah. And and so, there, those are very different perspectives. Well, but it's, that's a, that's that black and white, Jay. Right. I mean, as in a lot of things in life, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah, for sure. Right. Uh, absolutely. And, and I'm not and I'm not faulting anybody who's doing no. either, but 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 the truth will probably end up being in the middle somewhere. Well, the truth is somewhere in the middle, but the solution's going to be a way that embraces both. 
Um, the solution is going to be a way for us to, for example, re-stimulate the economy while simultaneously um, uh, directing our efforts towards community health and learning from what we understand, for example, about this current virus, understand about human behavior, understand what people really will and will not do right. um, under certain, under certain uh, directives. Uh, I don't know about you, I've, I've recently taken short walks out in the neighborhood and uh, if I said, is this, does this feel like a shelter in place? As I went up to our, we have a reservoir, um, yeah. just a, a short walk from here. And it looked like a social, social event. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's funny to watch. I mean, you know, I, I, you're like me. I, I watch stuff on social media. I watch stuff around. I'm communicating with a lot of people. It is, it is a time that's bringing up the best and the worst in people. It's bringing up the best in people like we were talking about, about people rising to the occasion, doing things that are selfless. I'm really empathetic. Um, and in the smallest ways and in the largest ways, right? Um, thankfully, you know, we have all this technology that makes it easier for us to achieve certain goals. And we are somewhat savvy about using it to a certain extent. We may be finding different ways to use it now. Um, but there, there's some some stuff that's like the ugliest night of nature too that's come out. Like I, I saw people basically reporting others for how dare you line up in a coffee line? Like you, you know you're supposed to be social distancing, you're supposed to be sheltering in place, and you're not sheltering in place enough to what I think you should be doing for sheltering in place. And my point is, yeah, that's just take care of your own, right? You don't have to look outwards. To your point, be in alignment with yourself. And respect that other people may be in a different alignment, but it's it's a it's a very fascinating thing we're going through. You know, I, I hate to put on my lab coat, but I tend to do that every once in a while and look at this. It is definitely a serious situation, and it will have impact on everything. You and I were joking about the fact that you know, are we going to be able to put the genie back in the bottle about delivering mm-hmm. alcohol when you pick up orders from restaurants, right? Because we had too much margin in the alcohol sales for that to maybe go backwards, but. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating to watch. So let me ask you this because I want to wrap this up. Two two questions. Sure. One, how are you continuing to perform the function and the role of the Center for Leadership while you are in this sequestered manner? And secondly, what are some things that you would recommend to people to do with this time that we happen to have right now? Well, those are two very, very different questions. Let me, let me start with the first one. Um, how, how are we at the Center for Leadership still conducting ourselves? Yeah. One of the things that the Center for Leadership tries to do is we, we try to connect, develop, and serve. And so we try to create connections. We try to develop leadership and we try to serve. We serve in the community and serve on campus. And so how do we operate in an environment where we have gone from really being a face-to-face type of organization, community organization, group organization, Mm -hmm. event-based organization, to one that's now operating online. To be perfectly honest, most of our events have been postponed. Most of the things that we had already planned to do, we cannot do under the current structure. Could you do them online? Well, this is, and this is, so what I do is I, I now go back to the roots of what the Center for Leadership is developed to do and, and how we're structured to be able to respond to the needs of industry. So we're, we're meeting next week with our board of advisors. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I meet with the board of advisors, one of the things we have historically always done is we've asked them, what keeps you up at night? What are the things you need? What can the center do in terms of programming? What can the center do in terms of systems, events, that would be beneficial to you? I had a staff meeting this morning with our center staff. And I said, when we talk with our board, we need to be ready to listen. Because what we're doing and what we were planning to do that we've postponed, that doesn't mean that now we don't have anything to do. I said, now we need to be listening for what the next sets of needs are actually going to be. 
I said, it's, a lot of it's probably going to be online. A lot of it's going to be virtual. So what I'm planning to do as a center director is to really start really listening to our board and listening to executives and ask the questions. I think Maya Angelou said, um, no, it was, it was Cummings that said, if you want a beautiful answer, you must ask an even more beautiful question. Cool question. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's really where we are, is that we've got to be asking about the needs of businesses, the needs of community, because what they, what I perceive they may need and what they communicate they need may or may not be one and the same. Our call to action is going to be responding to the needs of our of so, the again, so, so again, if I may, it is an example of humility because rather than top down, you're actually saying, we know what we knew, but what people are going through right this minute, which may not be what happens next week, we need to tune into that in order to continue to perform the mission of our reason for our existence, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's going to happen in the community as well as on campus with our students who are now mm -hmm. in an online environment. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with the scholars, the, our student groups on campus this afternoon. Right. Yeah. And I'm meeting with a group of alumni that, later this afternoon. And it's going to be the same kind of dialogue. I'll be spending most of that time listening mm -hmm. to what they want, listening to what they need, and thinking of ways that, that I can add value, that we can add value to the community, that we can add value to the, to the business environment, that we can add value to the students' experiences. And as much as there are needs, that so too the center will exist. And, and, and any thoughts, shares, advice for people that are out there that are uh, looking for some guidance of how to spend their, this, val this time that they have right now? I mean, I know one thing is to make sure you go to the center's website and familiarize yourself with all the programs and, and things that are going on. Absolutely. Um, get caught up on our TV show, The Leadership Voice. It's a great um, show. You know, uh, check out our website. Absolutely. But no, really... This is the time for everybody to start developing your capacity, start developing yourselves. There's, our environment has changed. And so what it means to succeed in the current environment has also changed. What it means to be good in this environment has changed. So if you're not familiar with using certain technologies, get really familiar with them. This is an opportunity to become really good at, at some of the video technologies. This is a time to get really good at using some of the features of some of these video technologies. So I would say everyone embrace what this brings us in terms of an opportunity to develop. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's all. Yeah, go ahead, finish. Necessity ahead. breeds this, but uh, honestly, this is a we can come out of this situation with a set of skills that might be incredibly valuable mm -hmm. for all of our industries well you you could you could argue that this is the i mean we've we have developed the technology right we have developed the remote ability to operate remotely i mean i was telling somebody the other day i've been remotely working for the last 20 years right so it's, this is not in its own thing new right the way we perform it, the way we go about it, the seamlessness of it, the, the fluidity of a connection like we're having right now on broadband, all this stuff being at you know the minimal cost, okay? We've kind of had this, but we have never been task tasked to put it into play exactly how we're being made to do now. And as a result of that, you know, learning how to build this complex thing of daily living in a different manner than just, oh, it's all on my cell phone. I don't know how this works. Now, how does this connect? How does this lead to this? Now I am taking a little bit more of an active role to know this. It is in inevitable that it is going to have an impact on how we live our lives. And it's going to be an interesting thing to watch from a so socio ex experiment, if you will, because there is no doubt in my mind that there will be a day after Corona. It's just a matter of what that day looks like for each and every one of us. And that's what I think you're saying is we get to maybe decide that today or increase the chances what we might want it to look like 
Whereas before we were basically just running, running, running fast at all things and not really having that gap in between things to actually think even. Now we have been awarded this think period. Well, you know, Datsu once said that the, the greatest leaders aren't the ones that are trying to change the path of the river, but rather are the ones that understand the path of the river so that they can then position themselves to where the river is going. And so a lot of people now need to understand that when this outbreak, when we, when we come out of this, this crisis that we're in, the, the world will be a little different. And so now the question will be, if you're hoping to, that things will go back to the way they used to be, they may never go back to the way things used to be. So who will succeed in their leadership? Who will succeed at the, you know, three months from now, four months from now, five months from now, it's going to be the people that have taken